it's such a different platform. I, I think it's, we're all on TikTok in some capacity now, but it is really a lot different than Instagram, like especially mm -hmm. if you're used to running your business on Instagram and then you try to start venturing into different platforms. It's weird because they're all so different in their own ways. Um, it's whenever I, whenever I became booked out and I had ended my program and everything, I knew that I wanted to keep growing my business. And ideally I, I had in my head that I wanted to eventually go into teaching other people how to do what I did, because mm -hmm. whenever I first started last year, working with wedding photographers, weirdly, I don't feel like there were that many VAs or social media managers or Pinterest managers that were really marketing themselves to that, that industry. And now it's funny because there's so many doing it, but a year ago, I don't feel like it was that way at all. So I was the only person in the program that I did that was working with wedding creatives. So I was kind of able to take it from an angle of like, okay, working with creatives is a lot different than working with coaches or real estate mm -hmm. agents or being an assistant to other people. The, the wedding industry is huge and there's a lot of things in the wedding industry that are really specific to it. So for me, I felt like I had kind of carved out a little corner for myself in this world and had learned a lot about it. So I was like, okay, I don't really see any coaches or teachers marketing themselves towards young entrepreneurs who want to work in a creative capacity rather than just work, you know, with any business owner. Mm -hmm. So that's, I had in my head that I wanted to do that. And so I knew that I wanted to, you know, I had wanted to work further with my coach back at that time, Erin. So eventually we started one-on-one -on -one coaching, which really helped me. It was nice to have someone to, you know, help guide me throughout that whole growth process. But it was definitely so much of TikTok because I typically, you know, whenever you're kind of transitioning into being a coach or just pivoting your business in general, you know, you, you, it's a big learning curve and you, mm -hmm. it takes time to establish yourself as an authority in whatever way you've pivoted. So for me, in my head, I was like, oh boy, this is going to take a long time for me to build out a program and find people. And I, at that time, being a virtual assistant really wasn't that common. It, mm -hmm. Not like it is today at all. So, oh yeah. I'm like speaking from someone who has to hire them. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. easy to find them a long time yeah. ago for sure. Yeah. So it was like, I was like, oh gosh, this is going to be really hard for me to find people who even, you know, understand what this is. So in my head, I was like, I don't want to follow a traditional launch strategy where you, you know, have this build up and then you, you know, it's like, you only have a couple of people and then maybe you can create a bigger program. And it's just like always launching mm -hmm. that in my head was like, I do not want to do that. Like I felt like business could be easier in a sense than that, than this like huge drawn out launch plan. Obviously it's important to have specific marketing strategies in place, but it just kind of felt like it was a constant trying to get people to want to work mm -hmm. with you. So I was like, well, let me go to this other platform and see what happens. I hadn't really seen that many business owners on TikTok. And there, there is like a whole business world on TikTok, but most of us just use it for fun. So I took, took it to there, made my first video. It took me like three hours to make that first video. And I was like, dear Lord, I'm not going to have time to do this. If every video yeah. is going to take me like three hours. Um, but it ended up, it started blowing up. And from there, that's when the real learning curve happened because I was like, what do I do with all of these people? Like now I have hundreds of people DMing me wanting my help and I have nothing in place to help these people. So that's when I started creating like my PDF guide. And then me and Aaron launched the masterclass um, and I launched my own 10 week program. But the masterclass is what we created really to help as many people as possible because there's no way as one person that I could take on, you know, hundreds of people at mm -hmm. once to teach them one-on-one, -on -one. the quality wouldn't be there at all. Mm -hmm. But wow. TikTok is like the best marketing platform out there yes. <laughs> for now, at least. Yeah. It's insane. And I actually was talking about this on another podcast episode recently that I, I decided, I was like, why not? Let, let's just try it for a second and like, see how it goes. And I like half-assed two videos about like artificial light. Cause so I was just like, we'll see. Like I've seen people blow up on it. Um, they took me like 10 minutes to make and they like didn't even blow up. They got like 5,000 views, which is like essentially nothing, but I got like hundreds of email list signups 
like way more than I got from paying like $300 on Facebook ads. And I was like, this is the wildest thing. So as someone who does not know that much about TikTok, what would you say has helped you the most on that platform? Cause it is like a weird platform where I don't feel like yeah. there's a ton of like obvious rules or like tips <laughs> on like, what are you supposed to, I'm like, are these videos supposed to be filmed on like some 4k camera? I feel like I see some <laughs> people's TikToks and I'm like, no, like I can't do that. That sounds like a full time job. That's so cinematic. <laughs> yes, I'm like no, no, no. I don't have the time. So, what's kind of been like your experience on it? Like, what do you feel like has been super helpful with that platform? Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny because yeah, it's there's kind of like an etiquette on every single social media, whether mm-hmm. it's Facebook or I'm not really Pinterest as much because it's pretty hands off, but especially Instagram, there's a general etiquette as to how things go. And on TikTok, it does not exist. <laughs> oh yeah. So, I learned that fast. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, there's no rules here. It's like the uh-huh. wild, wild west a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. So it's interesting because if you're going to use it to market your business, you have to be able to walk the line of being personally attacked constantly and trying to market your business because with TikTok, it's, it makes us feel like we know people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for instance, there's this girl that I have been watching for the last few months. She started her TikTok like four or five months ago and grew it from zero to a million followers in four to five months by posting like 20 to my gosh, just like of her life. It's like vlogging your life. But because of that, because it's such a like stripped down app, people feel like everything is very personal. Like, oh, you're making a video about how I could become a virtual assistant. Like you, you must be scamming. There must be some ulterior motive to this. So people are really, really apprehensive on the app is what I've found. So it's a bit different because as a business owner, well, I love the name of your podcast because I feel like personal (laughs) life and business intersect so much. Mm -hmm. But as a business owner, you're expected to be very like, super professional in every single response and you know have to have to hold yourself a certain way and you can say these things but you can't say these things Mm -hmm. so it's been interesting to navigate that on with having such a a big platform because it's really nerve-wracking like it's it's scary because it is such such a an un um filtered app I guess you could say Mm -hmm. Um, but what I've found that helps the most is just being super honest and being relatable. Like that is all people care about on TikTok really is if they can relate to you. It's, Mm -hmm. it's similar to Pinterest in the sense that people are there looking to connect, to buy, to find new things. Like that's what Mm -hmm. a lot of people are using TikTok for. So there is a really untapped audience for business owners because it's a new way that we communicate. 